Seattle Times writer Ryan Divish delivered a gut-punching roster preview last night in his article, they just kind of talking about what the Mariners roster going into the 2024 regular season will look like based around what he's seen out of spring training so far. And in this roster preview, there's a couple guys that have been left off of the list, and it's because the injury bug has already bit them. The first one we're going to talk about here is a very big piece in the Mariners bullpen. In his roster preview, Divish lists the bullpen as Andres Munoz, Gregory Santos, Carlos Vargas, Jackson Coar, Trent Thornton, Austin Both, Taylor Saucedo, and Gabe Spire. You guys are noticing that Matt Brash is not listed. In this article, Divish says, Right-hander Matt Brash was shut down from throwing after feeling banged up, in quotes, following his bullpen session last Tuesday. The young reliever didn't provide many details, but looked down at his elbow during the conversation. Mariners manager Scott Service has been asked about this in several different instances across the last 24 hours and didn't really have a whole lot to comment on the fact that we'll know more soon. And knowing more soon in regards to one of the key pieces to the Mariners bullpen, and it's related to his elbow, is never a good sign. Service has said that there will be an update to the issue in the next couple of days, but industry sources believe that Brash could miss an extensive amount of time, possibly the season. And this just reminds me or brings me back to Robbie Ray at the beginning of the 2023 season. It was an arm injury that we're like, oh, he'll be back, say, end of May, early June. Oh, Tommy John surgery. He's done. So if Matt Brash is out for the entire season, possibly needing Tommy John, this bullpen, it's not necessarily a problem because as it's listed, it's still pretty good. And I know there's a couple question marks there with Carlos Vargas, Jackson Kowar. You don't know really what you're going to get out of Austin Both, like maybe J Trent Thornton. Like, you know, there's there's question marks. Relievers can be very, very volatile. But Carlos Vargas has looked really good in spring training so far. And the Mariners have added so many relievers this offseason, likely just because they knew that there's potential to have to kind of cycle through a bunch of guys this season. Another guy that has been solid so far is Ty Buttry. Who, like, who knew? But with Matt Brash potentially being out for an extended period of time, the chances of him even making an opening day are basically zero at this point. Do not expect Matt Brash, if he does not require a season-ending surgery, to pitch probably until May because they're going to want to take him slow into the season to make sure that he can be there for as long as possible. You don't want to rush him back and potentially cut his season even shorter than it already is going to be with this banged up elbow. An elbow injury to a pitcher like Matt Brash, who's got one of the most devastating pitches in all of baseball, his slider, it's never good. And we knew what Matt Brash was able to do for us in 2023. We expected something similar in 2024. Maybe not lead the entire league in appearances with 78 games, but those 107 strikeouts over 70 and two thirds innings was very pivotal for the Mariners. It was a stopgap for that bullpen. And in 2024, steamer projections had him being, I feel like, just as good. 63 appearances, 63 innings, and 82 strikeouts. It was a 132 ERA plus for Matt Brash in 2023 with a 306 ERA. His steamer projections put him at a 302 ERA. So whether or not he was going to be better, relatively the same, you knew what you were probably going to get out of Matt Brash should he have been healthy. But as Divish is noting here, he's not at the time being. The other player being left off of Ryan Divish's projected roster here is a position player. A player who is replacing, supposed to be replacing Eugenio Suarez in 2024. Gino, who played all 162 games, basically all at third base, except for, you know, a couple innings here or there was supposed to be replaced by Luis Urias, who then got moved into a platoon with Josh Rojas at third after acquiring Jorge Polanco. Well, we knew Luis Urias was banged up all of 2023, and we were hoping that he could get back to his 2021-2022 Brewers days for the Mariners in 2024. However, it's not looking very likely. In his infielders listing here, You've got Ty France, Jorge Polanco, J.P. Crawford, Josh Rojas, Dylan Moore, and Sam Haggerty. Once we acquired Jorge Polanco, it really felt like Sam Haggerty was probably going to get pushed off of this. And in Tacoma, waiting in the wings for an injury or something to happen, well, the injury seemingly has already begun. Because 
Luis Urias, playing in the Mexican Winter League, did not have a great time there. Apparently, according to Divisier, showed up to camp not in great shape, which was, I think, a problem that they felt Gino brought last year into spring training as well with a previous article from earlier this offseason. So it's like, it's another issue at third base for the Mariners. And Divish wrote here, Urias arrived at spring training in less than stellar shape and dealing with the shoulder issue. While he's been playing catch, a very light and deliberate toss at about 70 feet, he seems to be a long way from being able to throw across the diamond with any authority. Until that changes, he is projected to be on the injured list. When the season starts, Urias is considered a below average defensive third baseman, even with a healthy shoulder. So, with that being said, the Mariners, are they just going to run out Josh Rojas at third base? Do they now pivot to expediting like Brian Bliss to the majors? Or if they want to see if Samad Taylor can give them some more, they try and like fill it from within. It's possible. Or then maybe they can go make a trade somewhere. Like if the Tigers are shopping, say like a guy like Andy Abanez, that could be a name that we could go out and look or sign Donovan Solano. There's names that the Mariners can fill here. But the one that people are probably going to be the most interested in is Matt Chapman because there's been some dialogue already and he gives you an everyday guy at third, allowing Josh Rojas to be more of a utility player. But the most obvious option for the Mariners to, I think, replace from within the organization is a guy that we haven't even seen in spring training yet because... The Mariners just signed him like on Friday last week. Ryan Anderson got a minor league deal with the Mariners and a $2 million contract guaranteed if he makes the major league roster. With Arias likely heading to the IL to start the year, Anderson, I think he's a prime candidate to just fill in for him in that capacity. If they really don't want to sign Matt Chapman to a opt-out deal or whatever kind of is figuring out for Matt Chapman, Brian Anderson is, I think, the internal replacement that likely will see the majority of I think the option there if they want to just hold on to Sam Haggerty and keep him in the minors and want to have a little bit more I think quality depth at third I don't think that Brian Anderson's like perfect but as far as like a third baseman you're probably wanting to pair him with someone there or have Josh Ross be paired with him or say Dylan Moore it's it's tough because last year Brian Anderson in March and April was pretty good 255 330 459 790 slash hit five homers, drove in 20 runs for the Brewers, but over time, slowly kind of started falling back into his normal tendencies of being a below average hitter and eventually saw his playing time completely sapped and he was not on a team by the end of the year. So Brian Anderson, not great, did not have a very good, I think, split against left-handed pitching last year, a, a 187 batting average in 2023. And he boasts reverse splits for his entire career versus righties. He's batting 258 versus lefty. He's hitting 231. So it's not a perfect platoon partner for Josh Rojas there, but it's a guy that can play third base and can play the corner outfield spots if you need him to. Brian Anderson, it's not the sexy pick. I don't really think Matt Chapman's the sexy pick, but now there might be a sense of urgency from the Seattle Mariners here, and I kind of hope that there is. I'm not in love with the idea of signing Matt Chapman. Signing Matt Chapman to like a two-year, like $40 million deal, whatever, with an opt-out after one might not be a bad idea. No way. We got you. Not a chance. Because he's going to give you everyday at-bats. He's going to provide you with decent defense, although it is declining. It's a better option than only running out Josh Rojas. So this injury bug, we kind of saw it coming for the Mariners in 2024 a little bit, or at least there was that concern of the injuries that would happen to this team. And we really needed to avoid them to be at our best. I mean, that's a pretty obvious statement there, but a guy like Matt Brash is a big blow. And Luis Arias, maybe we saw it coming with his 2023 season. And was he really going to be as impactful as we all, I guess, or panicking he had to be in 2024? Maybe not. But the injury is definitely a step back for him and a step back for the Mariners in general. What do you guys think should the Mariners do next? Colton has a video on the screen that we he made earlier, like last week, about the Mariners being interested in Matt Chapman. And a lot of those details feel a little bit more relevant right now than they did before. So check that one out. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I mean, there's not a lot to enjoy about this video. It is pretty unhappy reporting on my end of just guys being injured, but go Mariners.